Hi, my name is Deham Saud, and in today's video, I'll be going over everything that factored into my decision for why I picked a career in dentistry. Also, we finally got some updates from our school in terms of when we need to go back and when classes are going to start. Anyways, if you want to figure out if dentistry is the right career for you, stay tuned. So when it comes to the question of what you want to pursue as a career, especially in healthcare, it's something that's really difficult to decide because you really don't know much at this point. After you finish high school and you get into undergrad, you only have a very basic understanding of what a day-to-day -day activity of a certain healthcare profession might entail. And it's something that you're going to be constantly bombarded by friends and family. Oh, what did you decide? What are you going to do? So in this video, I'm going to try my best to help you guys figure out which way you need to go and how you can experience everything for yourself firsthand. So personally, I knew that I wanted to pursue something in healthcare, but I didn't really know what at this point. I had some introductory understanding of pharmacy because my dad is a pharmacist and I had a lot of friends who were pursuing medical school. So I got a lot of information from them regarding medical school. So during this time, I knew I wanted to do something in healthcare, but since I didn't know what to do, I just continually involved taking science classes. I took all the prereqs that were pretty much uniform for any of the programs that I would have picked. I was always a pretty artistic person. Like I'd always love making art pieces and involving myself in calligraphy. And I actually even had my own iPhone repair business. So I was always using my hands and tinkering with things and fixing things. Little did I know that would factor into my decision for the career choice that I would pick but yeah so I didn't really know what I wanted to do so I worked as an ER scribe I volunteered in hospitals and I did a lot of things and talked to a lot of people about different careers like optometry and pharmacy and my brother worked as technicians for both optometrists and pharmacists so I got information from him regarding those two fields but the one field that I didn't really have much exposure to talking to anybody about was dentistry, especially with dental assisting, because that's something that's equatable as a technician for pharmacists or optometrists. So before I decided to work in the dental environment, I actually wanted to make sure it was something that I wanted to do because there was a licensing situation that you had to get a license to be able to assist dentists in the state of Texas. So after my exposure to a bunch of the fields and talking to a lot of people that worked in those environments, I decided to kind of do the same with dentistry. So on a whim, I decided to volunteer at a Mission of Mercy event. And Mission of Mercy is an initiative that allows any patient that's uninsured to have free dental care that day. I was able to work with a lot of dentists and hygienists and that day, I really just was intrigued by everything. The way the patient interaction was with the doctors and the hygienists and just the way that everything was so different for each case. That day, sparked something in me and I wanted to learn more about it. And the hygienist that I actually worked with that day really took note of that. And she told me that if this was something that I really wanted to learn about and pursue, then I should get my dental assisting license. And that's exactly what I did. And after I got my dental assisting license and when I worked for a lot of doctors, I really found out that this is what I wanted to do. 100%. This is something that I would be happy to do and I would enjoy doing it every single day. So that's what made me make my decision. So a really good takeaway from this is that if you're still uncertain about dentistry, medicine, optometry, nursing, physical therapy, physician assistant, anything like that, then you need to do things to immerse yourself with those people so that you can learn about it. If you go online and check SDN and just talk to friends and stuff, I mean, yeah, you'll get some information, but you won't really get the nitty gritty unless you work in that situation or volunteer in that situation or shadow people in that situation. So please immerse yourself in that experience so that you can understand what that field entails and you'll make a really good educated decision. Go and actively learn about the, the profession that you're thinking about to find out if it's something that you can do every single day of your life and enjoy doing it. So yeah, like after I worked as a dental assistant, I proved to myself that if I were to do this, I would genuinely love waking up in the morning knowing that that's what I'm gonna do every day. And that's what really hit home with me and I knew that it was something that I wanted to do. And during my time when I was working, I remember one of the doctors that I would work for, he would ask me before any patient would come in, he would say to me, sitting down, he'd say, are you sure you wanna do this, Deham? Like, are you sure? 
And it would make me second guess myself, like, why is he asking me this every single day? But at the end of the day, when I'd keep thinking about when he'd ask me, I'd say, yes, absolutely, I want to do this. Now, this next topic is pretty polarizing and actually deters people from pursuing dental school, and it's for obvious reasons. So the median pay, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics for dentists in the United States, is just shy of $160,000. It's at $153,900. But the average debt of an American dental student graduating from their doctoral program of dentistry is just shy of $300,000. That number of $261,149 is pretty crazy. And the crazier part is that there's so many schools that charge more than that. Because a lot of the private schools, they charge a lot more for students to come into their institution to get their doctoral degree in dentistry. And some are as high as half a million dollars. Now, this is why having a plan is super, super important. You gotta have a vision and a long-term goal. Now, if you're a pre-dental student and you know that you only wanna work part-time, then the thing that you need to focus on is to get into a state school because the state schools charge well below the average debt of a dental student because these state schools charge well below $200,000 for the entirety of the program. So if you're a, if you're a pre-dental student and you only wanna work part-time and you only get into a private school, that's something you might wanna consider that if you, is it is it worth applying again? Is it worth adding up your statistics to get into a state school? That's something you might have to think about. Now, if you're a, now if you're a person that knows that they wanna own a practice, you wanna be a practice owner or own multiple practices, it may not be as much of a difficult decision as in the other situation because you'll be able to pay off that debt if you're working full time. Granted, it will take some time, but it's something that'll be way more manageable in that situation. So it's something that you really have to think about. You have to sit down, you have to draw out a plan, you have to write about what you're gonna do in every each and every year. You have to talk to people that are going through it, maybe talk to people that just got out of dental school. That's a really good thing to do to have the most up-to-date information. Definitely don't wanna be that person that goes into something. You went through high school, you went through undergrad, you went through taking so many standardized exams, you studied so much, you paid so much money to apply to these schools and you get in, and it happens, unfortunately, where people within their first year are like, yeah, this ain't it. I don't want to do this. I don't like it. And the way you can avoid this is by immersing yourself in those different careers that you're interested in. Shadowing people that work in different professions, working as assistants in different professions, researching, talking to people, immersing yourself, right? That goes back to what I said earlier. You want to make sure it's something that you'll be happy to do. Because once you get into school, you need to get out. Now, aside from all of those things regarding the financials and that decision-making process, that's granted and definitely should be an aspect of your decision-making process. There were a few things that really aided into that decision-making and helped me make the best decision for myself. The first thing was obviously that goes back to what I said earlier, that I loved the fact that it was a field that allowed me to use my hands and I could actually see real-time results in the moment as I'm doing it. And the patient can see it too. So that was something that really, really spoke to me. That the other thing that really appealed to me when it comes to dentistry was the fact that you have the ability to manage your own practice. Having that business environment allows you to manage the ongoings of your practice. What kind of patients are you gonna see? What kind of treatments are you gonna do? How many will you see at any given time? How many employees will be in there? So just that whole managing aspect of it and the business environment really, really appealed to me. But the one thing that really stood out on top of everything else was the fact that the patient interaction that Dennis had was so unique from my experience from what I saw. It was so interesting to me that whenever we'd be prepping up the operatory for the patient to come in, before we even start any procedure, and before the patient even sits in the chair, they're ready with questions. They have so many questions ready, not just for the dentist, but the assistants, the hygienists, the front, the front office staff. They, they're just ready. They just wanna know what they can do to better their oral health. And it's something that's been taking a really significant jump in terms of awareness because 
the last decade has been pretty monumental with dental care because not only with the oral health aspect but the dental aesthetics the aesthetics of your smile the aesthetics of how your teeth look that's been very important and it makes sense patients will have so many questions because they want to make sure that they present themselves the best way possible when they go out in the world they want to have the best smile they want to make sure they have the most straight perfect white teeth so that's something that just people are willing to pay extra for and it makes sense so Actually, this led me to want to research how much money Americans spend on dental care in any given year. According to the American Dental Association, 3.7% of all healthcare spending is in the dental realm. But when you translate that percentage into dollars, it's pretty astonishing. It's approximately $124 billion. That's with the B, billion dollars that Americans are willing to spend on dental care. That's crazy, man. That's how important this is for people. That's how much importance has been placed on it within the last few years. That's why I think the career of dentistry is something that made sense for me because of many of these reasons. Now, will that number be affected this year? I'm sure it will because of the fact that dental practices are closed and not a lot of people are able to get treatments right now. I actually made a video about the coronavirus and how it's affecting students. So if that's something that interests you, go ahead and give that video a watch. And our school actually told us that we gotta be back in school on June 2nd. So we got to go back, actually starting packing already. Um, and my wife and I, we decided to actually drive because we just didn't feel comfortable flying and we don't want to stay in any hotels on the way or anything like that. So we decided to just drive in one shot from Houston, Texas. It's going to be a long 17 hour drive, but we're going to do it and it's going to be worth it because it's the safest thing that we decided we could do. Anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful for you guys and especially to you who all are applying to dental school. When it comes to the personal statement, that's what this prompt actually asks you to address. Why dentistry? So I hope you can take away some tidbits from this video that you can build upon and reflect upon personally in your own situation. And yeah, that's the end of this video. See you in the next one. Peace.